right, it's just turned nine o'clock, so we might get going. We are recording, so good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our first session with our Small Business Month. And thanks to the New South Wales Government for assisting us with providing some outdoor specialist sessions for small business in the outdoors. And also thanks to Snowy Monero Council, who's been a great supporter of ours in uh, getting the word out there about these sessions that we're running. This is the first of four. So we've got three more coming up for you. And I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about those as we get started. But first of all, uh, may I say Warumi, which is uh, Darug language for welcome and hello. And may I pay my respects to all Aboriginals, past, present, future that care for the lands in which we operate today. And we hope that we treasure the land as much as they have in the past and the present and in the future. So I'm Laurie Mode. I'm the CEO of Outdoors New South Wales and ACT. And uh, we bring this session to you, our outdoor sector, because what we try to do is empower you to continue enriching the lives of our communities by connecting them with nature to lead more healthier and fulfilled lives. So a bit of housekeeping on Zoom. Today's a webinar. It's a little bit different to our usual connect and shares where we get to see your faces. Today we don't, unfortunately, but we can hear you if you want to put your hand up and ask a question and we can certainly unmute you. But the most important features of today is the Q&A which is where you can put any questions to our wonderful guest speaker who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, and there's also a chat where you can actually chat with other attendees in the session. So the distinction is that only we see the Q&A uh, while the chat is a feature that you can engage in. Um, you can certainly set up your, your screen the way you like to see it as well. And, uh, and hope you enjoy the session. Um, as I said earlier, we are recording because there's quite a few that couldn't make it and really wanted to see what we had in offer today. So uh, we'll be sharing that on our YouTube channel a little bit later. And a quick reminder about our Friday Connect and Shares. Uh, this is our regular session, uh, which is hosted at 10 a.m. every Friday, where we get the community of the outdoor sector together and share a lot of content or information that's happening in the, in the grounds. Um, but also discuss some of the challenges and work out some paths to navigate around them. Uh, this week is all about 2021 and what is on the horizon for that year. What have we got to be prepared for? What do we need to be prepared for it? And also we will touch on the budget, which uh, I'm sure you are already over the news at the moment, which is totally flooded around the budget. We'll give a bit of a synopsis on what that means for the outdoor sector and in particular you guys. So um, the other small business sessions we have, the next one is next week, and that one is uh, solely around social media and marketing. So if you're interested, please make sure you jump on the website and register. The week after is about empowering you with research and tools that you may not know existed. So please, that's, that's on the 22nd of October. And then the final one is on the 30th, and uh, we have the amazing Dan Cockrell, who is the ex-vice president of Magic Kingdom coming to talk to us about leading teams. So uh, register for any of those if you're interested. Um, but let me talk to you about today's guest speaker. And I have had the privilege uh, of knowing this gentleman for uh, quite a while and um, he is amazing. Let me just quickly read you his bio. The challenges and triumphs he's faced as the captain of the Socceroos, as well as being his own personal struggles in dealing with epilepsy has given Paul a unique life experience. Paul Wade is a gifted, highly entertaining speaker capable of delivering relevant messages on a range of different subjects tailored to suit the event need. He incorporates a fun motivational school, business and corporate orientated message and he's one of the most highly experienced sought after speakers in the industry. With 118 appearances for the Socceroos, the 1988 Olympic Games, two World Cup campaigns, two National Soccer League Championships and the NSL Player of the Year in 88 offers a unique insight into the world of professional sport and principles he learned can be applied to everyday life and business. Paul Wade through Paul Wade Life Skills also presents to high school, primary school students. Paul's most popular presentations for primary schools is life skills and moving on to high school, where he provides students with a number of scenarios around choices and consequences, friendships, teamwork, communication, respect, and resilience. I'm just exhausted reading that, Paul. I don't know how you're feeling right now, but please, may I introduce yourself and uh, take it away.
I'm not sure if I've lost signal or if Paul's lost signal, but uh, just checking if I can connect with him. Yeah, I think it's Paul. Oh, it's Paul. <laughs> I thought it was me. I'm going, oh, I've lost signal completely. I think, yeah. Okay. No worries. No, 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 Paul's dropped off the page. Okay. <laughs> Timing is everything. <laughs> okay, we'll get him back uh, just while we're waiting for that. We were just talking about technology. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope we got online. There we go. All right, wait a second, guys. We'll get him back. I might just pause the. That's <laughs> It's all good. Apologies, everyone. As I said, it's a great advertisement for the NBA, um, I hear, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Dear, oh dear. Wow. <laughs> well, the good thing is we got through your bio, so we haven't missed yes. anything of your talk. So I'll leave it up to I you. Know. Now. <laughs> I know. I know. Can I just check? Can you actually see me? I'm not sort of cut out there or anything. No, no, it's yes. a great picture. <laughs> the framing's good, is it? The framing's oh, thank perfect. goodness. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I started off as a draftsman out of school and I, I worked in the media calling games for the Socceroos and Matildas and the, the A-League. And, and at the end of all of that, when your time comes, there'll be some other Socceroo captain or somebody else who is new and is next generation. And in the media, that's what they want. Somebody new. So I had to reinvent myself, right? I And you think about all the people who used to host shows. Where are they now? Well, they've moved on. I'm in that boat. I still work in the TV and media, but I don't do it full time. So I'm continually reinventing myself. And I want to make this little chat that we're having about reinventing yourself, about maybe knowing you might not know exactly what your future holds, but at least if you're prepared you'll be able to see all the options you've got. Remembering that change is inevitable, except from vending machines. I love that one. You can use that too. Change is inevitable, except from vending machines. Now, if we accept that, we can look at options and choose one that's good for us right now. So I'm gonna talk lots of football and health stories, but I want you to the, relate them to your life, both personally and professionally. Uh, we're all going through hard times. Uh, some of us are dealing with it, some of us are not. And those who are not, we really need to uh, support in every way. But this is how I do it. I Every time you play for your country, you get to swap shirts with the opposition. Final whistle goes shake hands, swap shirts, walk away and go, wow, I remember that game. Now you can see on the first slide, all the stats there. Yeah, 84A international, soccer captain between 90 and 96, 118 appearances, wow. But my mum says, yeah, Wadey, but how many good ones? Which, which is really harsh when you hear that from your mum, isn't it? You should, mum's had that ability to just smack you just when you think you've got it all sauce, clip you around the back of the head. Um, one thing I will say about that first slide, how good is that mullet? That is a great mullet, right? I am today. With that, I could blend into a, a youth camp anywhere in this country. Absolutely. All the photographs there you'll see on the, uh, the left-hand side as you look at that slide. Little bits and pieces of my career playing against because we used to play against countries and clubs. So we didn't always play A internationals. That's why it says 84 A internationals, 118 appearances. Because we used to play against Everton and AC Milan and Man United. And that's the way it was back in the day. And we went on uh, tours to Southeast Asia and we played against their country's B side. So 118 appearances means I pulled on a shirt for the Socceroos 118 times. Now, as I said, this is how I earn my living. This is how I've re reinvented myself. And I'll have to do it again. 
Uh, after this, I'm going to talk to people uh, about another program and creating chances, they call it. It's working with youth, youth that are in trouble, disengaged, at risk, all sorts of things. So there's the shirts. At the end of the game, as I, as I said, you swap shirts with the opposition. Now, this shirt here is on the internet as one of the world's worst football shirts. All those who agree say, I. Oh, okay, maybe the eyes haven't got it. Very few people said I, and those that did, you're an absolute disgrace. No, the reason I've still got this is because nobody would swap with me, which is, which is really embarrassing, especially when you're on live television and you try and swap. No, mate, it's all right, you keep that. Here's mine, but you keep that. Gee whiz. Until we played against this team here. Sweden at Olympic Park in Melbourne. And uh, he swapped with me. The number 18 swapped with me. So I'm walking off the old Olympic Park. It's not there, obviously, anymore. Olympic Park going, wow, I've got a Sweden shirt. I'm going to frame that when I get home. He's walking off going, what the... Total lack of respect. He walked over to the crowd. He's just thrown it into the crowd. <laughs> really? They threw it back at him. They didn't want it either. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? Now, this, apart from that to being a very funny story now, um, I, I picked it up, got all the boys to sign it. Bit of a collector's item now. But I also use it because this is our lives right now, eh? We've just had turmoil here. The internet's gone down. There are so many reasons why we should get angry. Hey, change, deal with it. Get on the mobile, see if you can do that. I connected, reconnected. That was my life for about two minutes. Total chaos. Or we could say, hey, right, there's a real challenge here. Let's just calm down. Let's look at options. And let's see what we can come up with. And fortunately, because of Laurie, we have come up with a, uh, with a good solution. She said, get on the mobile and, uh, and we'll just go from there. Problem solved. Um, it's probably a great thing to happen in this area, this conference right now, because it just shows you that shit happens and you can fix it if you stay calm and just have a look at options. So you can either see your life right now as total chaos or, wow, let's have a look at all the exciting options we have. And you have, believe me, because today, remember this. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. Today is the very first day of the rest of your life. Today is the very first day the rest of your life. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about what might happen in the future. We all start right here, right now. And some of you will be at varying degrees of motivation and worry, but we stop the clock and we start right now on day one of this workshop, session one. Wipe everything else out. Yeah, we'll still have the same problems. We don't want to ignore them. But from now on, we will, we will take a positive outlook and we will take that into every problem that we occur. Right. That, on the other hand, this one here is not embarrassing. It was my job way back in the day. Some of you weren't even thought about, never mind, born, to mark arguably the greatest player ever to play the game, Diego Maradona. Twice, one at the Sydney Football Stadium in front of 45,000 people and one at the River Plate Stadium in Argentina in front of 85,000 people. Now, wow, what an honour to go from living in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne, playing for Dandenong City, to marking one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Wow, what a journey. But I bring this out because it's probably appropriate in the environment we're living in at the moment. This is what stress is. 
I'm going to put into stress, into words, what stress or anxiety or whatever you want to call it. This is what it is in words. It's capability versus expectation. I know what I'm capable of, but what is expected of me? Stop Maradona scoring a goal. Now, the first thing you think about when you're told, this is what we expect of you, you start to worry, you start to rate yourself. You start to think, oh, I can't do that. I just play for the old Melbourne victory. That's what I do. I'm not capable of doing that. Your mind, your emotional mind is saying, messing with you, you got no chance of doing that. You just play for the old Melbourne victory. Do you know how good he is? So instantly the trigger or the activating event was your Mark and Maradona. I think about what he's done for Argentina, for Napoli, for all the clubs that he's played for. And now I'm starting to believe that I can't do it. Now I'm starting to believe that I'll be a failure because he'll score lots of goals. Now I'm starting to believe that everyone will blame me. Now the consequences of that, anxiety, stress, capability, expectation. Um, uh, what I say to you is, if you can write those three things down, A, the activating event. B, what did you believe? What were the dangers you thought? C, the consequences, both emotionally and physically. If you can write it down, get it out of your emotional mind and put it on a piece of paper, you can rationalise it. Your rational mind will go, I can't prove that he will score lots of goals. I can't prove that I won't be clever enough to stop him getting the ball. There is no evidence to say that I can't do that. So in your world, in my world, outside of a football ground, write it down. At night, have a piece of paper and a pencil by the bed and write it down. When you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, worried about whether you're going to have a job or how to pay the rent or how to pay the mortgage, write it all down. A, activating event. B, what did you believe? C, the consequences, both physically and emotionally. If physically, for me, it's like, um, can't think straight, um, uh, so nervous, don't join in conversations. Um, that was me physically, but mentally I was it. I can't do that. This is my writing it down. The coach said to me, have a look at his last two games. This is me actually rationalising it. My emotional mind is saying that. My rational mind is saying, have a look at his last two games. So I did. He's only that big. He only used his left foot. He is very, very strong. I'm looking at this. He's so strong. But the fourth thing was he didn't move very far. He was just wandering around. And I'm watching him going, that big left foot doesn't move very far, really strong. At least it's given me something to go on now. So I've watched that. And I'm feeling a little bit calmer because it's right there in front of me. It's not my imagination. It's not my emotional mind. So now I start to think about, all right, not very tall, really strong. And the whole time in the lead up to the game, I'm practicing that. I'm thinking about that. Right, okay. And the, the closer I get, the more relaxed I feel because at least I've seen it. So there I have. I've watched that, practiced that. The night before we played them, we had a practice match, all those who were playing versus all those that weren't. And in this practice match, the assistant coach played the role of Maradona and just walked up empty Sydney football stadium, just walked anywhere he liked, all over the, the ground. And he kept saying to me, don't you dare let him go. There'll be distractions everywhere, but your job is to stop him. So I watched that. I practiced that. I rehearsed that. The next night we went out there, I'm standing in the Sydney football stadium tunnel with the soccer rows behind me. And he's standing there like that. And I'm thinking, geez, you really are small. 
and you look because I'd never seen him live before. And I thought, gee, you look really strong. Now, instead of feeling the consequences of me not doing this job, I was actually thinking, you know what? I'm hoping I know I've done enough homework, but I'm not afraid of you. I'm nervous, but I'm not afraid of the consequences uh, because I've done everything I can to prepare. Instead of feeling stress, I was feeling what they call eustress, E-U, stress, which is exciting stress. It's like, come on, let's do this. Yes, nervous. If you go to the next slide, Laurie, you'll see um, uh, some of the pictures there of me walking out with Diego Maradona and uh, the middle one at the top singing the national anthem, uh, shaking hands top right there. Um, yes, I was nervous, but whoa. And you can see the two bottom ones. I was uh, just followed him around for two games. Um, and if, if I did foul him, and I never thought that, why would I go and kick? lumps out of the greatest player ever to play the game. But I, if I did knock him over, I just thought, just say sorry, mate. Just say, I, don't, I didn't plead for mercy, but I just put my hand up because I didn't want him in an outrage. I'm going to destroy. I've gone the, quite the opposite. You all right, mate? Yeah? Right, let's get on with this. Why would I go and fire up somebody who's torn the whole world apart on any given occasion. So remember, stress, capability versus expectation. Write it down. Don't run. Um, stress is um, such a difficult thing. If you can very quickly bring up that next slide, Laurie, the uh, what is the dealing with stress, you can see some of the points that I've made right there. Don't rate yourself. Don't think, I can't do that. That's the start of stress, your emotional mind rating you. And at the bottom, we've got uh, the activating event, the belief or the danger that you attach to it and the consequences, which I've already had a chat about. So there are just a couple of the things. One of the, the comments there is smile. Listen to dad jokes. All right, all right, you know, you're going to roll your eyes. But if you listen to them and analyse them, you'll find them funny. Somebody complimented me on my parking the other day. They put a little note on my windscreen. It said parking, fine. See, most of you are laughing or at least sniggering. I know you don't want to because you think I'm not going to encourage dad jokes, but I can see. I can see all of you with a little wry smile on your face. Uh, how about the uh, protest outside the hearing aid company? Guy at the front with the placard. What do we want? Hearing aids. When do we want them? Hearing aids. It's, an, it's a great dad joke, right? See, you're smiling. You're relieving that stress. Dress nicely. Um, listen to good music. The music that provides the positive frame mind. I don't know, there are so many things where you can take ownership of your own life starting on the very first day of it. This is how the soccer is, and this is inappropriate in the business world. But um, I think the real, the real reason I bring this out is you can create an atmosphere in your team, no matter what your job is, that is positive. You have amazing powers. You can be as grumpy as you like, but the flip side of that is you can be as positive as you like. And this is how the Socceroos, we laugh at each other. Now, hopefully you can see that. I am an idiot. That is given out at the start of every day to somebody who did something really stupid. And it's to be worn for 24 hours and it's never allowed to be washed. Now, this becomes bullying if people don't want to participate. Fine, no problem at all. As I say, this is not a, maybe a workplace thing, but the principle behind it is just laugh at yourself. Just smile. There's enough stress on us as it is. And I know in the industry that you're working in, 
you've probably not got that four walls and a computer and a, I've got to do this. And, a, and he's having a go at me. Fortunately, I'm hoping for you and me, we've got great jobs and we love it. It's just the, the uncertainty, uncertainty of it at the moment. This is how some of the players got it. Name five countries beginning with E. <clears throat> five. Yeah, Ethiopia, Estonia. Yeah, England. One of our players said Istanbul. Oh, put the shirt off. Istanbul, you are kidding me. Somebody else said Europe. And then some smart aleck went, went and said euthanasia. Dear, oh dear. All right, the last one was taken to Mickey, but the first two were very serious. Either that or they're great actors and didn't smile. This is how I got it. All right, played against the USA at the Citrus Bowl in Miami. And we beat them one goal to nil. Very, very happy with that. But I thought we're, we're going to go out tonight. Late, late, obviously. We're going out late. So I've jumped in the front of the first cab and I've looked down and there's $10.45 on the meter. We haven't even left the hotel. So I said that to the cab driver. You turn the meter off, $10.45. One of the boys in the back of the cab has looked over the front seat and gone, Wadey, that's the digital clock, you idiot. It's 10.45 at night. The meter's on the other side. Oh. I wore that shirt for the whole tour of America and South America, and I deserved it. And I was the Socceroo captain. Just because you're the leader, the, the boss of your own business, doesn't mean that you can't be humble. You can't make mistakes. Because as soon as you look as if you can't make mistakes, people will go, well, I'm not going to help you. As soon as you look vulnerable, that's where people go, they have empathy and they go, he needs a hand. So don't ever be afraid to, to ask. Not, don't ever be afraid to not know, I guess, um, and laugh at yourself. Smile. I know it's difficult, but smile. So if we've got the, the stress and the pressure and then we've got that smiling and dad jokes, I guess it's all about finding a balance. Now, this is a, an interesting one. You don't find them anymore. For all you young'uns, you might not know what country that is. For all you oldies, you definitely will. These are acrylic symbols for USSR, which stands for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. This country was dissolved on Boxing Day in 1991. I got this at the Olympic Games in 1988. So it's a bit of a collector's item. Now, my story of balance goes like this. What a story. That's the goal we're defending right there. That's the goal we're attacking. I'm in the middle of midfield and I'm told, mark the number 18, or sorry, 15, Alexei Mikhailachenko. So that's what I did. Wherever he went, I went. This is way before Maradona. And I was over there. And I was tackling him, but the ball went over to the other side of the ground. So I went over there and because I'm the soccer captain and I'm super fit and I ran over there and I was tackling and, I, and the ball went back to Alexei Mikhailachenko and I was trying to get and tackle him. And then the ball went back over there and I could. I was absolutely exhausted. He scored one and made two because I felt that I've got to help my teammates and actually do their, their job and I've got to do my job and I've got to do their job instead of standing here just observing what's going on over there with my teammates but keeping my eye on him because that's my job. All right, I can see that, but I know where he is. Finding a balance between our mates and, and giving people ownership and the job you've got to do can be so difficult. That might be your family and that might be your work. Finding a balance between your family and friends and sport and your work with all the worry that you've got right now can be so, so difficult. If we can get this right through sport, putting it in your diary at five o'clock on Friday, 
I'm going to be getting a massage or I'm going to be playing sport. I'm going to allocate 11 to 12 on Friday to go for a walk. Put it in your diary so that nobody can argue with you. If you had a, an AGM at 11 o'clock on Friday, you wouldn't move anything to be at that meeting. So why would you do something for yourself or not do something for yourself? If you can just give yourself time to breathe and smell the roses, it makes it a lot easier. This is the most embarrassing thing that happened to me. I was working as a, uh, a journalist in Canberra uh, where my little girl, well, one of the three were born. And she came in and she said, I was typing an email. And she came in and said, Daddy, will you listen to me read? And I went, hang on a minute, princess. I'll be with you in a minute. I've just got to type one more email. So I typed that email and I typed another one and another one. And I turned round. She'd gone to bed. She was fast asleep in bed. All I had to do, guys, was listen to her read for five minutes and she'd have gone to bed happy. But no, I've got to type one more stupid email. It haunts me now. It really does. I mean, nothing happened. It's quite ironic that we're talking now because she, she left me um, about two weeks ago. I'm an empty nester. She's gone 23 years, living next door to Alex. That's what I see anyway. Her name's Alexandra. Um, but how could I do that? The balance in my life was totally out of balance. Uh, I'd I listened to a, a guest speaker a number of years ago, and she said, this is how I balance my life. She said, I drive in from work, high pressure, because she's a, a top executive, drives in the driveway, sits there for one minute in that car and decides which mum is going to walk through that door. Is it that mum? I'm so fed up and so stressed. Or is it that mum where she wants to be, had a sport go today, all the things that mums want to do or dads or whatever. She said, that's how I decide. Take a breath, one minute, in the car and just remind yourself which mum is going to walk through that door. I thought that's a that's a great way. You might some of it might go home, but at least she's aware of it. She doesn't find out from her kids later on how poorly they've been treated because of her stress. So it, it's a it's a big story for me finding a balance, especially now, right? Especially now. So this. Uh, yeah, quite a collector's item. Boxing Day, 1991, it was dissolved. The USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. This is, I was born in England, came out here when I was 11. And I played against England at the Sydney Football Stadium. We, uh, we got beat 1-0 and we scored the goal for them. Oh, thank you. A full house. There were over 40,000 people there. We get get beat 1-0 and totally, they were professional footballers. They're all stars. They're earning $100,000 a week and we're earning $300 if we win for the Socceroos. That's why we're getting 300 a win, 200 a draw and $100 if we lost. So in front of a full stadium, we got $100 and then the tax man went, I'll have some of that, thanks. That's just the way it was. We didn't care because we were. I stopped being a draftsman. I was playing for my country. So I got this at the end of that game. But the story around it is in the lead up to the game, it's all this, wow, we've got England coming out here. They're world class. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, Laurie, just bringing up the next slide. It's the, uh, the England slide there. Yeah. We've got... The first, the top left there, you'll see me and the guy. I'm, I'm not giving him a hug. It was just a photo shoot. That's uh, Gary Lineker, who's the captain of England. And uh, they just want this friendly rivalry. Hey, England have come to our shores. But then the media jump on it and they're going, come on, Aussie. This is the next photograph. Come on, Aussies. And they've got a, a kangaroo kicking a, uh, a lion up the bump because they're the three lions, England. That's their, that's their, their emblem. 
And then they're saying, oh, you know, you know, it's going to be difficult to beat England. And all I said was, well, they're only human. I'm trying to put a positive spin on it, you know. Everyone's putting us down. We're not going to win. But, hey, they're only human. Anyone can be beaten. Of course, then top right, you've got the sun. You've got the Daily Mail. The media in Fleet Street are ruthless. Because we got beat 1-0, I went to a press conference afterwards and the bottom left there. All I said was, I was a bit disappointed about the way England played today. I thought they'd be better than that. Just a throwaway line. Well, the media have jumped on it. You can see in the middle there, the can of 4X beer. The 4Xs on that, that photograph of the cutout represents the Aussie part of that statement. I don't give up 4Xs for England. Substitute those four X's for whatever word you want. And then we've got palms didn't work their magic. We've got all these little headlines, all because I said I was a little bit disappointed that England weren't better. Rue blast for Taylor Tour flops. Uh, Taylor's, Taylor is the, their manager. Um, Taylor's koala bores. I mean... Their job, guys, is to sell newspapers. And headlines like that sell newspapers. Writing nice stories, people don't care about nice stories. You watch the news, everything's miserable until you get the panda bear story right before the weather. People just feed off or seem to feed off negative stories. So, wow, what a lesson. Just be careful <laughs> what you say, whether you're the one saying it or you're the one listening to it. Boy, when I went to my next press conference, well, the ball is round. And yes, to all the journalists, yes, there are three possibilities, win, lose and draw. Give them nothing. Cliche after cliche. That's why some sportsmen do it. Full credit to the boys. Had their backs to the wall, they dug deep. It was a game of two halves because they know that that journalist or all of those journalists are looking for that seven-second grab. Wow, that was my first press conference. Oh, welcome to the real world. Gee whiz. This, this here is, that is the shirt that I wore against Argentina over there. This was always going to be my shirt when the Socceroos were playing. There are four rooms in life, guys. Contentment, you don't have to choose. Denial, you refuse to choose because it's not your problem. Confusion, geez, I don't know what to choose. And renewal. You choose, you set goals, you revisit those goals, you plan and you organise, you self-manage, you're accurate, you communicate, you prop. That's where we want to be, right? And that's probably where a lot of you are. But if things are going right, they're not, you don't realise how quickly you end up in this room over here. Contentment, denial, confusion, renewal. This is my football story 88 times. For the Socceroos, I'd played every single one of them. This was going to be my shirt. It didn't matter if I was five minutes late for training. I was, I'm was. i the Socceroo captain. You don't realise how not, well, I suppose arrogant by not doing these things that I became wrong. Because in two World Cup qualifiers against Canada, it was... Uh, the coach came up to me in Edmonton and said, listen, I want a word with you. He goes, uh, I've decided tactically to do something different in the middle of midfield. You dropped. So I've gone from I'm always going to play to being told I'm not good enough. Now, the first thing you do when you're told you're not good enough, if you think about it, you go, yeah, I'm not good enough because, and you look to blame anybody and everybody else. Your business is crashing down in your mind. Yeah, that's because of COVID. That's because of um, suppliers not wanting or the government or you blame 
everybody else in the room of denial. It's, it's, only, it's human nature, right? The third room, confusion. Now I've got two choices. I can either really get cheesed off and angry with that coach because he told me that I'm not playing and not good enough and he changed his tack, or I can go, all right, so how am I going to get that shirt back? I know I'll work twice as hard. Physically, I was tackling. And the hardest part of this, though, I'm the soccer room captain. I had to be so positive going into the next training session. I'm told I'm not good enough. The next training session was the hardest because, hey, guys, you know, I might not be there, but we as a group have got to be um, together. We've got to get – that's the hardest part, just ignoring it's not about you. Um, so I worked twice as hard. I thought, oh, I'm going to get my I'm going to get my shirt back. I'll be in this room, the room of renewal, planning, organising. He said, look, they played really well against Canada in the first game. You drop. So now I'm back in this room of denial. And the journalist said, so, Paul, what do you think of the coach? What? If I'd have said what I was thinking in this room of denial, I might never have pulled on a green and gold shirt again. Instead, I thought working hard has not worked. What else can I? I asked the assistant coach, Durr, Sometimes we get, oh, well, I'm the captain of the soccer is I'm supposed to know everything. Just ask somebody. And this is what the assistant coach said. You know what you do? You receive the ball from over there and you get it. And then you work out, where am I going to pass the ball to next? Instead of, I know where the ball is and where it's coming from, but where is it going to go after I get it? Yeah, here it comes, but it's going over there. That's where it's going. Hang on, there's a problem over here. So now it's got to go over there. So at least I know I had two choices, but that's the best option now. He said, that's all you got to do. Just have a look at where the ball's going to go before you get it. That's all I had to do, guys. And I got my green and gold shirt back in the next game. And in the next game, we played against Argentina. Boy, was I over here in this room for the rest of my career. I was there on time. I was training twice as hard. I was so enthusiastic. I watched video after video of players we were playing against. That's where I should have been all the time. So remember these four rooms. Contentment. Don't have to choose. Denial. Refuse to choose. Blame everyone else. Confusion. Geez, I don't know what to choose. And renewal, you choose, you set goals, you revisit those goals. All the things that you're doing, hopefully, right now, on the first day of the rest of your life. If I'll, I just don't want to get caught out with lacking time. Laurie, if you can hear me, how long have I got, do you think? Um We've probably got uh, 10 minutes, but um, we can continue. And uh, as we're recording, if people need to go, they can probably catch up. Um, right. Let's just okay. keep going, see how we go. All right. Uh, I want to tell this story about um, my health. Um, this is what happened to me when I was that big. I felt sick, hot, dizzy and lonely. But I wasn't going to tell any of you this was happening to me. How weird is that? You know, whether I was going to school or playing football or um, doing a presentation, sick, hot, dizzy and lonely. Don't tell anyone. So I didn't. And I lived with it for years and years. And I was hoping that nobody would see what was happening to me. And then I collapsed in front of a physiotherapist right before we played Argentina. And they said, we're going to do tests on your brain. You don't just collapse like that. So they did tests on my brain. I was got a mark on my front temporal lobe. They said, you've got epilepsy. Here's your medication. So now I'm sneaking around with this medication, praying that nobody sees me taking it, praying that nobody sees me now, what I know as a, a seizure. I had epilepsy. I'm having seizures all the time. So I kept it to myself and everybody else. Nobody knew about it. And then I got caught on Channel 7. 
having a seizure. So if we can bring up the, uh, the interview one, uh, please, Laurie. It's the, uh, uh, not that one. Yep, that's the one. If you, uh, if you have a look at that, this is how I got exposed on free-to-air television when the Socceroos were playing France in a friendly. You can see me start the interview, top left, and I ask him the first question. If you could just go through the slides yourselves, I ask him the first question. And then I ask him the second question, but don't give him the microphone. You can see top right, he's not really confused. I'm actually having my seizure now. And then after that second question, I just don't give him the microphone and then I give it to him and I take it away halfway through his answer. So you can see bottom left there, he's scratching his ears, ear going, what the? He thinks I'm taking the mickey out of him. And in bottom right, I throw back to Sandy Roberts in the, uh, in the central commentary position, sprung live on Channel 7. I'm figuring I'm going to lose my job now. Fortunately for me, the director said, you idiot, if you'd have told us, we could have cut to a shot of the crowd. Well, turn your microphone off, go to a commercial break. Well, there's so many things we can do to help you out. All you had to do was tell us. So now I'm having five seizures a day, but at least everybody knew about it. And they weren't going to solve my epilepsy problem. But just the fact that other people knew and understood takes such a weight off your shoulders. Um, and this time, I can't emphasize enough, guys. Uh, yeah, write it down. But just tell someone. And that might be telling someone about what problem you're having with your business and networking and find another option that you can do. So five seizures a day, the neurologist said, we're going to take, see if we can take that scratch off your brain. Laurie, if you could show the first one with the scar across my brain or my head, I should say, there's 67 staples there. They took part of my front temporal lobe the size of two matchboxes and stitched me back up. But I had three operations, one to take the part of my brain, one to take the infected bone, and the third, third one to put a steel plate in over the hole in my skull. So I spent five months in hospital. If you don't want to see my brain, look away now. I, I got three operations. I was going to get a photograph of it, even if it killed me. So if you could just flick that one up, Laurie, you can uh, just have a look. There it is. There's the skull at the top. And you can see the brain there. And you can see the sack of the brain uh, being pulled back. That silver thing in the middle at the bottom, that's the hole left after they'd taken part of my front temporal lobe out. The bit of meat down the right-hand side, that's the bite muscle down the side of my head. I had to cut through there three times, obviously. But the hero in this is my wife because she had to look after three girls. She, I was a contractor. When I work, I get paid. But if I don't, I don't. I don't get sick leave like probably a lot of you. I don't have to get holiday loadings. I don't get, I don't get, I have to pay my own super. It's a tough gig, right? So if we're not working, our worlds come crashing down. So to have somebody so supportive like my wife, going to get a, a, a job, part-time job of her own, looking after the three kids, worrying about whether her, her husband's going to die or not. That's a strong woman. Uh, we can be strong for other people too. But the biggest problem now is my short-term memory and ability to concentrate are shot to pieces, absolutely shot. But the great thing about having short-term memory loss I get to hide my own Easter eggs. <laughs> I throw my own surprise parties. And I get to meet new and interesting people all the time. It's a great thing to have sure I could get away with murder. Sorry, guys, I forgot. Gee, I promise I didn't stuff up the start of this Zoom meeting. That wasn't me. I don't think. I don't think anyway. So how do I deal with that, right? I do stupid things, and this is um, with all these stories, 
there's an element of I am not going to give up. And this is what I do. Learn stupid things uh, because I still work on the TV and the radio. And to do five minutes on air, uh, Channel 9 on Sports Sunday, it takes me hours and hours of study to do five minutes. You might think, what, you got paid for that? I worked eight hours for that five minutes going over and over and over stuff. So this is what I do. It's totally inappropriate, but it's a challenge I faced, and this is how I choose to get through it. Right. It's a story of Australia. Some of you might remember Australiana. Remember that? All about it was ostentatious, wrote it. It was a it was a hit. It's all about Australia. You will uh, you'll get it once I, I start talking. Now I've memorized this. It's taken me months, but I refuse to allow my brain to die. So this is what I do. I was sitting there Sunday morning, and my mate Boomer rang. Does that make sense? My mate Boomer rang. Said he was going to have a barbecue and cook a burra. I said, great, well, Wallaby there? He goes, yeah, Veggie might come too. I said, great, I'll ask the wife. I said, do you want to go, Anna? She said, uh, I'll go if Ding goes. I said, what about Nulla? She said, nah, Nulla bores me to tears. So we go to the barbie, who should greet us but Boomer's wife, Wara. She gave me a drink. I said, thanks, Wara Ta. A cooler barmaid you wouldn't find anywhere. We go inside, Alice springs to her feet. How's it go, two blokes for wearing too much aftershave? She says, oh, you reek a stockade, boys. Oscar's over in the corner. He's trying to chat up Ina. He says, do you want to dip in the river, Ina? She said, I haven't got my cozy, Oscar. Will a didgeridoo? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Bo said, why don't you go in Starkers? What a lake it. Ina says, what, without so much as a thread bow? Perish, I thought. Airs rocks in. Boys are playing cricket. Boomer comes over and says, why don't you let Wombat? I didn't want to play cricket. I went inside. I said to me, mate, Liptus, want a game of eucalyptus? He's gone, nah, Darwin's every time. So I go outside, my mate Bass. He's not getting into it. He's not getting out of it. I thought his Bass straight or something. Next minute, he gives Bill a bomb. Blue Mountains away and his three sisters. So I'm walking across the garden. I pick up an empty stubby. I go inside. I said, found that on the lawn, Seston. Walk round the corner. There's Warra trying to plant a puss. How much can a koala bear? Now, I don't want to speak Illawarra. So I flashed my wanger at her. And I went outside to join the party. Young girl out there called Masu dying to go to the toilet. So I said to me, mate, Al, where can Masu pee, Al? He said, Marino's. Then he said, no, no. Send her down the back with the fellas. She'll have seen a cockatoo. I said, I said, let's go, Anna. Let's go. She said, I don't leave till gum leaves. Anyway, you wouldn't want to leave Jack around a party on his own. He's already tried to crack on Toowoomba and Mount Isa. That is Australiana, ostentatious, wrote it. It makes us all smile. It's totally inappropriate at times. I probably haven't got it in the right order but it just gives me a sense of achievement that I can do something that you can't. <laughs> now, I've practised, but it makes me feel good. Do you know what I mean? It makes me feel like I'm, I'm taking ownership of my life. I'm not waiting for life to dictate to me. I'm going to make this work. And that's what I'm saying to you guys. It's really tough right now, but don't wait for it to dictate to you. You are very, very good at lots of things. You must be. You're in business and you're doing things that are so proactive. Think about what you can do outside of that. If you could just bring up one more, um, Laurie, if you could, that uh, noughts and crosses. If we could just, that is what I want you to remember from now on, on the very first day of the rest of your life. Sure, it's cheating, but don't worry about that. Think outside the square for your own mentality, for your own, the people around you, for everything. That Look, this is going to be, this is the first session. It got off to an ordinary start. But that's life, right? That's life. Don't let it dictate to you. You have skills. 
you go and use them. You'll be surprised at how many things you can do. Amazing. Laurie, keep up the good work. You're doing a fabulous job organising this. It's not easy. Oh, uh, we've, known each other for a, yeah. we've known each other for a number of years. You're an angel. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. An amazing, amazing session. So thank you so much for your attendance. Just quickly, if anyone has any questions, just stick up your hand. I'm sure um, you're all pushed for time. But um, if you wanted to send me any emails, I'm certainly happy to pass them on to Paul if you if you want a response. But um, uh, thank you again so much, Paul. It's so great to see you and hear you again. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely keep you involved in the outdoor sector, which is just a wonderful part of industry today. Yeah. Can I tell one more dad joke, please? Of course, go for it. We'll please. end on a high. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids in trouble with the police, one for drinking battery acid, and the other one for eating fireworks. Police charged one and let the other one off. <laughs> Ta-da! Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> thank you so Bye. much, Paul. There's a few thank yous by the chat. They've really enjoyed the session. So thanks again. And thanks for bearing with all the technology dramas and and praises to the uh, the budget on the NBN upgrade, and we'll certainly see, <laughs> hopefully, some systems improve in the future. Thank you again. Yeah, good on you, guys. Take All care. All right, see ya. Bye bye. Bye.